Let's work on this example. In this example, I have a fictitious table here, which shows the number of times parents have helped the children either to pay for college or to buy a car. Now using this table or this data set, our first question is to develop a joint probability table. So similar to a previous example, we're going to copy and paste this table right here as is. So as you guys know, in a joint probability table, you have your totals column, your marginal probabilities, and the joint probabilities in the center. So before we get started with that, let's find our totals. Okay, I'm using the sum function to add up the two rows. You can do autofill and double check. Let's do our column totals. And this total here should be the total of these two cells as well as these two. So it should be equal. So let's make our grid lines. Okay. Now let's get started with the joint probabilities and the marginal probabilities. So again, I'm going to copy this table and paste it right here. Now, the joint probabilities are the probabilities in the center. So let's go ahead. So here we have 55 and we have a total of 200. So we're going to do equals to 55 divided by 200. Okay. And here as well, 53 divided by 200. So here we have 15 divided by 200. So the idea here is each cell of data, we are dividing it by the total. Okay, so everything looks fine. So this answer has also come out perfect. So here the total has to be one. So as you guys know, for the probabilities, there are two rules that apply. One is probability can be between zero and one. And the total of the probabilities should be equal to what? Uh, probabilities are usually displayed with four decimal places, so we can um, increase the decimal place very easily. Just highlight your data set or select the values under your home tab right here in the center. You can increase or decrease your decimal. So let's increase it. Okay. This one you can decrease it. There you go. Okay, so we have answered our first question which was to develop a joint probability table. So before we move on to our second question, you might have noticed that we forgot to include one column from our joint probability table. So right here we have the options yes and no for pay for college, but the options for buy a car, this there should be one column here, that one is missing. So let's go ahead and include that. So insert So I'm just putting the options yes and no. So for buy a car, there should be um, the two options as well, yes and no. And for pay for college, we already have that. So go ahead and include that. And let's do a little bit of formatting. Putting the grid lines. And if you want, you can merge these two cells like this. So now we're gonna work with question number two. Question number two asks, Using the marginal probabilities, are parents more likely to help buy a car or pay for college? Now, this is fictitious data. So according to this joint probability table, 54% of parents are more likely to buy a car and 35% um, of parents are more likely to pay for college. So looking at the marginal probabilities, which are the ones that are highlighted here, it's telling us that parents are more likely to buy a car. Okay, so this answer is based on this information 
from this marginal probability that we see here. Now we're going to work on question number three. Question number three asks, if parents helped buy a car, what is the probability the parents assisted with paying for college? So here we're going to apply our conditional probability formula. So the question here is saying, if the parents did help buy a car, so that's your given condition, then what is the probability that the parents also assisted with paying for college? So let me remove all the coloring from here. Okay. So the given condition here is if parents helped buy a car. So for buying a car, if you look at the yes category, 0.5400 or 54% of parents helped buy a car. What is the probability that the parents assisted with paying for college as well? So the intersection of these two. So this 0 0.2750 is the probability that the parents also bought a car and also paid for college. Now, if you remember your conditional property formula, here the formula would look something like the probability that the parents paid for college and bought a car divided by the probability that the parents paid for the car. Okay, so here the probability that the parents paid for college and the car is 0 0.2750 divided by the probability that the parents paid for the car. So the total of 0 0.500. So in Excel, I'm using the equal to sign to divide these two cells. So the answer for question number three is 0 0.5093 or around 51%. So here we're going to use the table to answer question number four. Question number four asks, if parents did not help buy a car, what is the probability the parents helped pay for college? So again, here we're going to apply the conditional probability formula. So the formula is going to look something like this. Probability that the parents paid for college and did not pay for car divided by the probability that the parents did not pay for the car. We use that formula because here the given condition is that parents did not help buy a car. So that's B or the second part or the given part from your conditional probability formula. In order to find what is the probability the parents helped pay for college, we come up with this formula. So if you recall your conditional probability formula, First, you need to find probability of A and B occurring divided by probability of B occurring. So here, we have the given condition that the parents did not pay for the car. Then you're trying to find the probability that the parents helped pay for college. So your formula again is probability that the parents paid for college. So we're looking for yes category here and did not help buy a car okay so yes from the college category and no from the car category so this cell right here divided by the probability that the parents did not pay for the car or did not buy the car okay so we're looking at the buy the car category at the no cell so this total right here hence for question number four we are going to divide 0 0.0750 by 0 0.4600. So the answer for question number four is 0 0.1630. So around 16%. This is the probability that the parents helped pay for college given that they did not help buy the car. So now let's use our table to answer question number five. Question number five asks, is the assistance given to buy a car independent of the financial assistance given to pay for college? Now, in order to determine if two events are independent, there is a test you can do. The test is you need to check if the probability of A occurring, given that B has a good, is equal to probability of A. Or you can switch the two events and you can say probability of B occurring given that probability of A 
has occurred is it equal or not to probability of b if this answer you get is equal then you can conclude that yes the events are independent so let's do the test here so here our a will denote financial assistance given to buy a car and b will denote financial assistance given to pay for college so here we first need to find the probability of buying a car occurring given that parents have paid for college and we need to test whether or not it's equal to probability that parents have provided financial assistance to buy a car. So let's do the test here. So probability of buying a car given that parents have paid for college is 0 0.2750. So if you remember your conditional probability formula, we need to still divide that by probability that parents have provided financial assistance to pay for college. So pay for college is right here. Yes, is right here. And so we need to divide it by 0 0.3500. Okay, so here we are still solving for a probability of buying a car occurring given that parents have paid for college. And the answer we get when we apply to a conditional probability formula is 0.7857. Now let's look at the probability of buying a car or probability that the parents have paid for financial assistance to buy a car. So buy a car is right here. Yes is right here. And the total is 0 0.5400. So looking at these two answers, We can clearly see that 0.7857 is not equal to 0 0.5400. Hence, these two events are not independent. You can do the same test to the second portion here. You can either test for probability of A occurring given that B has occurred to check whether or not it's equal to probability of A, or you can do the test by switching the two events. You can test um, if probability of B occurring given that A has occurred, is it equal or not to probability of B? Both of these you'll find are not equal to the results. Hence, the two events the assistance given to buy a car and the assistance given to pay for college are independent. Look at question number six now. Question number six asks, what is the probability parents help provide assistance by either buying a car or paying for college? So here the keyword is or. So if you remember your law of addition or your addition law, it stated that if you need to find probability of event A or B occurring, you will need to add probability of A plus probability of B minus probability of A and B occurring. So here our probability of A is financial assistance to buy a car. Probability of B is financial assistance to pay for college. And then we look at the intersection of both. So let's take a look at our joint probability table to identify the probabilities that we need for our formula. So here the first part is probability of A, which is probability that parents are providing assistance to buy a car. So buying a car is right here. Yes is right here. The total is right here. So 0 0.5400. Now let's identify probability of B. Probability of B is the probability that parents will provide assistance to pay for college. So here we're looking at the yes category and the total here. Now the intersection of A and B is 0 0.2750. So under yes for car and under yes for college. So now we have the pieces that we need. Let's put it together. So our formula is probability of A plus probability of B And we're going to deduct the intersection. Okay. So the probability that parents will help provide assistance by either buying a car or helping 
pay for college is 0.615, so around 62%.